Hello, my name is Mike Nolan, and uh, I am a parishioner at Little Flower, and I'm very happy to be here uh, to share my testimony. So uh, I would like to um, kind of uh, rewind to my childhood. I had a very wonderful childhood, grew up in a great Catholic family. Uh, there, I had a lot of brothers, so obviously there's a lot of competition, competition for attention, competition for uh, validation. And I think uh, what uh, happened with me as a child is uh, I remember going to my mother, and this is kind of just indicative of how of a little bit of the formation of my heart, and in just that awesome life, family life, which was great. As family, we prayed together, we had a lot of fun together, but I also felt a little bit overshadowed, I think, and so I made a lot of noise in order to, you know, I was always cracking jokes and being extra animated in order to try and find my spot. But the way that I ended up performing with sports or with school, or I, I was kind of, in a certain sense, lost. So I, I, you know, I never knew what page we were on at school. Always had to ask three or four times what, what paragraph we were on. I was always lost. I had to go back and, uh, and because of that, I didn't perform well. And I always felt a little bit overshadowed. I remember going to my mom one day and saying, Mom, I'm, just, I'm not good at anything. I got nothing. And I remember my mom looked at me and said, well, you're a fast runner. <laughs> and I, I took that as such a consolation prize, you know, like, oh, you know. Uh, and uh, that was kind of indicative of my childhood. Well, I kind of sought to fill that, uh, like, okay, here's how much is needed for me to become who I am, and this is how much I have. And so I, I put a lot of muscle into filling in that gap. And. Uh, you know, from my modern perspective, I look back and, and Jesus says, Beware the leaven of the Pharisees. And he's talking about exactly that thing, trying to fill in that gap with, uh, I don't know, the accomplishment of the law or being righteous or, you know, uh, I'm not enough, and this is what's needed. Whereas Jesus took the what was not enough, the loaves and the fishes, and he multiplied it to way more than enough. So Jesus is my leaven, that's one thing. I didn't know it. I didn't know how to do that, so I got into music, and I was, uh, uh, I started, I kind of excelled with music beyond my siblings and friends. So I grabbed onto that, and I took that as my identity, and I ran with it. I ended up going to university for music, and uh, I got a master's degree as well, and it was what was, to me, finally something that could launch me into uh, being somebody, it actually was the most crippling thing because it was a false identity. And uh, so uh, meanwhile, paralleling all of this, this whole quest to try and substantiate myself, give myself substance, you know, figure out my place in the cosmos, uh, and music being this sort of crutch or this sort of like a fake way of getting, in, getting myself in there. Um, parallel all that, you know, early on when I was uh, 14 years old, I went to Medjugorje. My parents uh, sent me a, a, a group of youth, about 300 kids, and I had an amazing experience there. I experienced Our Lady, I experienced Jesus. I was slain in the spirits uh, when the priest prayed over me, and I had a profound experience of Jesus and uh, an encounter. So I was 14. I came back from Medjugorje, went to high school. In high school, I had you know, all the ups and downs. And, but where, no matter how dark it got, because of that experience in Medjugorje, I knew where to come back to. So I never left the faith, and I never let go of the Lord. Though I was very dualistic, you know, like, I mean, duplicitous, or uh, living two kind of parallel lives. Um, but whatever. Um, and in college, I was uh, you know, still using music as my substance, and I was, you know, I also was walking with the Lord in a certain sense, go through the sacraments, go to confession, receive the Eucharist, fall, come back to reception, uh, confession, back to mass. But um, I was playing in a band actually, in a rock band, in uh, at one of the bars, and this is uh, around uh, the University of Notre Dame, and I was, uh, we hit our set break, and somehow. I don't know how he came into that atmosphere. Jesus was standing in front of me, and he called me, called me by name. 
He said, Mike, come and follow me. It was the most insane experience I've ever had. And I didn't see anything, but uh, Jesus was just standing in front of me calling me by name. So I put my guitar down and I walked out of the bar and I drove home. I quit the band. I uh, ended up having kind of a nervous breakdown for about six months because this call terrified me, absolutely terrified me. But after six months, I, mean, I almost dropped out of school and uh, um, I, I, was, I was really struggling, I wasn't eating. I'd go to mass every, every day and spend two or three hours behind the tabernacle just laying on the floor. I didn't know, I didn't know, I, I, I didn't know what to do or how to uh, respond. But after six months, somebody had saw me struggling in church and they came up and said, can I just pray over you? And they put their hands on me and said, some little prayer, you know, Father, bless Mike with what he needs to yada, yada, yada. I don't, I don't remember. And I thought, oh, yippee, okay, you know, thanks, means a lot. And uh, he walked away and within two minutes, Something opened my mind and my heart, something outside of me, and just gave me this incredible desire to say yes to the Lord. So I looked at him and I said, yes, what, you know, if, I, if I'm going to be a priest, if I'm going to be married, if I, whatever you want, I don't care, I just want you. And it was an ability that was given to me that I did not have myself. I couldn't do it myself. But the Lord enabled me to, to, uh, to he like sort of gave me his mind. And I saw how ridiculous it was to be so free. I started eating, I started sleeping, I started playing video games and watching TV and just enjoying life again, <laughs> which was fantastic. Um, and I started playing music again, which was good. It was good. Uh, and I got through school. I met, uh, right after that, I met the girl who had become my wife. I was actually, after that moment, I was married nine months later. And we started our family right away. We have seven children now. And uh, wow, you know, uh, the Lord, he moved really quickly. I didn't know how quickly he was going to move. But um, again, this whole music crutch. So in 2002, which was about uh, five years after, five and a half, four and a half to five years after I was married, uh, I had that, sorry, four and a half years after I had that experience. And now I was married, I had uh, four, three children, four kids, I can't remember. But um, I had my three children, I had three children. <laughs> and uh, I went to Medjugorje again, the second time. And this was a whopper. So I, we had our trip and we, we had brought, I helped to organize this trip, we brought a bunch of college kids and my parents were, were kind of the main organizers of the trip. It was phenomenal. We had an incredible experience of God, incredible experience of prayer and the church and the church just being alive. Mass, adoration, uh, praying the rosary together and the Stations of the Cross, but just like on fire, you know, this joy and this, this different, never experienced it like this before. Uh, the last day we were there, the uh, Miriana was to receive Our Lady in this apparition. So my dad gave me a camera, a big camera, to go film it with. And I was terrified to do this, okay? So, but anyhow, I said yes, so I, off I go, and um, there's a couple, th there's thousands of people, probably 10,000 people there, they're all spread out, and then there's a tent in the middle, and that thing, the tent is filled with people, and Mariana's gonna go in there. So because I had a big camera, they brought me, I should've been in the back of the crowd, but they grabbed me and brought me all the way through the crowd, right to the very front, I'm standing here, Mariana's going to be about where you are in the camera there, <laughs> and Our Lady's going to appear between us to her. So I'm just terrified. I can't believe where, just how this has happened. So I started to really panic, and I have this camera, barely know how to use it, and I'm, I'm uh, filming around, filming different people. They're singing praise and worship, they're saying decades of the rosary, and they're just praising God. There's this joy in the air. Well, Mariana comes in after an hour or so, she kneels down, they're praying uh, the rosary, and then all of a sudden Our Lady comes. She drops whatever's in her hand, the tears start rolling out of her eyes, and she's looked up, she's in ecstasy. So I zero in on her face, and again, my panic attack starts to really happen. So I looked up in my heart, I'm just afraid I'm going to screw, the, like this is the most important thing that's ever happened to me, and I'm just going to screw the whole thing up. <laughs> and uh, I'm looking, uh, I'm filming Mariana, and I look to Our Lady in my panic, and I said, 
Our Lady, help me. And all of a sudden, I lost awareness of everything around me. Uh, you can see from the footage on my camera, the view goes up, it wanders up, <laughs> and her face is way down in the corner because I'm gone. I am not there anymore. All right, in front of me is Our Lady, Blessed Mother Mary, and around her is wrapped the glory of God on into eternity. Unbelievable. And I'm just caught up into this. And Our Lady said two words to me. She said, fear nothing. And uh, it went through my body like a, I don't know how to explain it. It resonated in every cell of my body. Fear nothing. It wasn't just like, okay, now take that and try and go learn what it means. The understanding of fearing nothing penetrated my whole body. And I, the only way I can explain it is this. If you're tied to the railroad tracks and a train is coming down the tracks to, and you're about to decapitate you, to be afraid is the most childish and ridiculous emotional response because of that glory of God that was wrapped around Our Lady. God is so strong. He loves me so much and is, has absolute sway over every atom in the universe. <laughs> and so fear is just ridiculous. And that, that totally penetrated my body, that understanding. Well, I came out of that ecstasy and I saw my camera way off her and realized where I was and I went right back down on her face. We, she finished out the apparition. Uh, you know, the whole thing wrapped up. I was absolutely elated, absolutely elated. I went back to our pension and later that night, someone brought me the uh, uh, translation of the message. And I actually have it here. I'm going to read it for you. So this is March 18th, 2002. So this is what Our Lady conveyed to Mariana. Dear children, as a mother, I implore you, open your heart and offer it to me and fear nothing. Oh my gosh, I got to hear part of her message. <laughs> I about fainted when I read this. So this is later that night. I, I didn't know what, what had transpired during the apparition. You know. So I'll continue. Dear children, as a mother, I implore you, open your heart and offer it to me and fear nothing. I will be with you and will teach you how to put Jesus in the first place. I will teach you to love him and to belong to him completely. Comprehend, dear children, that without my son, there is no salvation. You should become aware that He is your beginning and your end. Only with this awareness can you be happy and merit eternal life. As your mother, I desire this for you. Thank you for having responded to my call. So, so from that point forward, Our Lady has been doing exactly that in my life, is teaching me how to belong completely to Jesus and that Bringing me to that awareness that he is my beginning and my end. Now, I was still, you know, neck deep in music. I recorded CDs, you know, I had my degrees. I taught at the university for a little while. Um, and uh, what the Lord then had to start working with was my identity. And uh, it's been a slow road, but it's been absolutely wonderful. So I have, you know, I'm like a roller coaster. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm on top of the world, uh, you know, my wife will say to me, so which side of manic are we on today? <laughs> but, uh, but the Lord, the sacraments, the church, Our Lady, absolutely solid all the way through. And I'm, <laughs> I'm doing this whole thing. And uh, what they've been teaching me is that Jesus um, is my beginning and my end. And he's been coming against all those things in myself, like music, that I was using to substantiate myself. And uh, re-speaking over me, or speaking over me, um, who I really am. So, uh, I, in that, I have found incredible freedom and incredible peace. So, um, music had to kind of die, and it did. And I still play music. I play for uh, you know, for mass and things like that. I play for rosary. I play for, or for adoration. But now it's just it's just something I can do to help everybody to sing. Whereas before it was the reason that I was also a contender. You know, I'm, I'm here, I, I exist, hello everybody. You know, that's what, and there I am screeching on a loud electric, <laughs> I exist. <laughs> and 
And the Lord says, you don't need that to exist. Let me substantiate you. Let me be your leaven. And I'll take the little that you have because it's true. I'm not enough. This is what's needed and this is where I'm at. But he'll be my leaven and he'll multiply me like he multiplied the like loaves and the fishes. And it's unbelievable what he's done with it. So I've actually been you know, leading pilgrimages for the last eight years. This year, everything got shut down. Praise God. And it was God's shepherding. But for, this, for the seven years, incredible graces and conversions. And I've been, you know, the Holy Land and the Medjugorje and Rome and Assisi, all over the world, just coming, going to find God and get, kind of get out of our well-structured life and let the Lord um, kind of come to us and uh, give us his mind and give us his version of reality instead of our. But on top of that, um, uh, now during COVID, this has been the most, you know, for the Lord uses everything for the, for the good of those who love him. It's been the most amazing shepherding for the Lord for me. He's teaching me how to rest. He's teaching me, again, he's speaking my identity over me and showing me the ways that I started to draw my substance elsewhere. So I had this little existential crisis, but the fruit of that is the Lord saying, you know, you belong to me and you're a son and through Jesus. And because of that, that's where you have to draw your substance from. And when that's in order, then he can, you know, I can receive his love and return love. And then I can be like a reservoir that fills up and bubbles over and, starts, and really bears fruit, bears fruit that lasts, as opposed to, uh, trying to, you know, I wrote a lot of music for the Lord, but here I am screeching away trying to, <laughs> trying to bear my own fruit. So that, in a nutshell, that's kind of uh, uh, been kind of the overarching part of how the Lord has been. What he's taught me to do, I'll just finish with this, is um, he, to give thanks for every moment of my life. And I, it was difficult for me to do, because there are lots of moments I'm very ashamed of. But the Lord uh, said to me, and I asked him, why would you want me to do that? He said, uh, because I have brought you from the darkness into the light. So I just praise and thank you, Lord, for all that in Jesus' name.